Hi everyone, this is Vortex. How's it going today? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. Today we are going to make our way through the Mirage Tower, which stands right here in the middle of the Great Desert, also known as the Yonikern Desert. In our last couple of videos, we picked up a couple of necessary key items that will be needed to access this tower and also the Flying Fortress a little later on. So if you haven't picked up the Chime or the Warp Cube yet, you won't be able to make it to the next Fiend. So please be sure that those items are available in your key items list before continuing onward from here. Now before we head on inside the Mirage Tower, I want to spend just a few minutes wandering around this desert looking for two more monsters so that I can add them to my bestiary. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time looking for them and then I'll show them to you once I've found them. And here we go. I found one of the two new monsters I was looking for out here in this desert. This is the Beretta which has 256 hit points. It has high defense and attack power so weapons aren't going to do a lot of damage against them just like the desert Beretta. Now, magic spells aren't all that effective either unless you use a high level magic spell. I guess I'll just have Lena use the gauntlets, but I'm going to have Vivi use the Blazaga spell. I've found that that works pretty well against these, so let's demonstrate that here. So it takes both Cloud and Lock to defeat just one of those with their weapons. And the gauntlets here. Uh, they don't do a whole lot of damage, but they did a little bit over a hundred apiece. But you can see that Vivi's Blazaga spell did the most damage and took out the rest of those. So there you have it. Defeating four Berettas will net you 1,428 experience and 1,200 gil. Alright, one more monster that I want to find out here in the desert, so I'm going to go hunting again, and I'll see you again once I find it. Okay, I finally found the second monster that I was looking for. This one seems to be a bit more rare. It took me a little bit of time to find this one. This is the Sandworm, and Sandworms have 200 hit points. I believe their attacks can poison you, and they can also cast the Quake spell, so be wary of that. I think they have pretty low defense power though, so it should go down pretty quickly. So. Let's take this thing out before it bites the finger off here. <laughs> so let's just uh, defeat it here. Ah, Vivi nearly took it out with his cat claws and Cloud defeats it before it had a chance to attack. And we win 670 experience points and 900 gil from it. All right, I'm gonna work my way back to the Mirage Tower entrance. And once I get there, we'll go on inside. Before we do go inside though, let's take just a moment here to take a look at those two new entries in our bestiary. Entry number 81 houses the Beretta, and it offers no treasure drops, no weakness or resistance. And number 85 is the entry for the Sandworm, and it has no treasure drops either. Its resistance is Quake, and you know, I was really hoping that I would run into that Tyrannosaur while looking for those two new monsters, but alas, no such luck. It's gonna take a lot longer than about 10 minutes or so to find that one, I'm afraid. But I did go ahead and use a tent, and I also saved my game. Now I'm gonna be attempting the Mirage Tower at level 41, which is probably just a bit over level for this point in the game. You may be lower in level than I am, and if so, you may have just a little bit more trouble with the masses of monsters inside the tower, but as long as you've got plenty of high potions and ethers, you should be okay. So let's go ahead and step inside here. This tower has three floors, and you can already see the staircase leading up to the second floor off on the left side of the screen there, but before we go up those stairs, we want to find eight treasure chests inside this chamber, so let's go get them. I'm gonna take this right path here. Okay, here's the first of a few new monsters we will fight here in the Mirage Tower. This is the Black Knight. Nothing really too special about the Black Knight. 
It has 260 hit points, but otherwise, pretty easy to take down. Let's just have Lena use uh, Mage's Staff, and uh, let's see, which one of Vivi's spells have we not demonstrated yet? So I don't think we've used Break. I guess we can try to use it against the Black Knight, but Cloud and Locke may take it out before I have the chance to use that spell on the Black Knight. Yep, looks like Locke's going to take it down, and I don't think Break is going to work on the Nightmare. Nope. But there's the animation anyway, just in case you were curious what it looked like. And, uh, yep, the Snort ability blinded poor Locke there. But it'll wear off after this battle. So let's just get rid of these last two enemies, last two Nightmares, and continue onward. After looking at the entry for the Black Knight in the Bestiary, which can be found at number 104. Ah, and there's its treasure drop, which is a Deathbringer sword. Very cool. Walking around through this tower that supposedly doesn't exist because it's a mirage. Aha! There's one of those mechanical contraptions like we found in the Waterfall Cavern. And just like the other one, this one's looking for its master. We have waited so long. Ah, oh, poor thing. Still looking for its master 400 years later. That's the thing about being a robot. You tend to outlive humans, have a higher longevity. Do you remember the vampire that we found way back in the Cavern of Earth? Well, they appear in packs here in the Mirage Tower and actually had a little bit of trouble with those because one of them actually paralyzed Cloud. So watch out for those when they appear in packs of four or more. Aha, I see treasure. Let's go pick them open. Well, let's go get this one nestled up in this corner first. Inside here we will find 800 gil. Very nice. Treasure chest number two contains a healing helm. All right, very good. That's another item that you can use in battle that will heal a little bit of HP to all party members. So that can certainly come in handy. Three different chests we can pick up from this little nook. Chest to the north contains 3,400 gil. The chest to the west contains 18,010 gil. And the southern chest contains a Vorpal Sword, which I believe is a sword with a curved blade, but it really isn't too terribly useful, so I'll just sell it off for gil a little bit later on. Actually, I just checked, and that Vorpal Sword is in the shape of a crescent, so I guess it probably looks pretty cool. It's too bad in these early games you didn't really have detailed looking weapons that you could equip like in later Final Fantasy games. Alright, let's come back around to this side and see what these two chests hold. First treasure chest contains an Aegis shield. Alright, that's a shield that will protect against stone and poison, I believe, and that could certainly come in handy because Medusas do tend to roam around the Mirage Tower here, so I'll go ahead and put this on Cloud here. And the second chest. Well, speak of the devil, that was a battle with three Medusas and a saber tooth. They didn't try to turn Cloud to stone, though. But anyhow, before I was rudely interrupted, what I was going to say is this second chest up here contains 2,750 gil. And one more chest off to the west over there we can get. So let's go pick it up. And this chest contains a tent. And that will replace the one that I just used before entering the tower. Alright, let's zoom down here to the staircase. Okay, here is another new monster available here in the Mirage Tower. This time we're going to fight three Chimeras. Chimeras do have the capability to use the Blaze ability, which will do fire damage to all your party members. Looks like they have 300 hit points, and they are weak to ice. 
so Glazara or Glazaga will be a good choice. There's the Blaze ability there. And it looks like more than one want to try to burn up the Light Warriors. But they're just going to end up burning the Light Warriors by making them mad. Of course, Locke's Ice Brand does a lot of damage, as does the Blazara spell by VV. Pretty good experience. Pretty good gill there, too. And we can find the entry for the Chimera at number 105 in the list. Resistance to Quake and Fire. Alright, let's go down to the left side here to find the staircase. So let's go on up to the second floor. We're going to have to take the long way around to get to the next staircase, but there's actually quite a bit more treasure also available on this floor we'll want to pick up. So let's go up and around this way. Still one more monster I'm looking for here in the Mirage Tower. Ah, beware. Those cocky cockatrice birds and those pesky pyrolisks can also be found here on this floor. They can certainly ruin your day pretty quick. Fortunately, I was able to take them down with a Fira spell. All right, let's, uh, yep, let's go off to the west here. And around, and there's another one of those mechanical creatures. Lena, Locke, and Vivi are now level 42. Well, I was just chatting with one of those four vampires I was fighting there. One of them said that he just got done watching the Twilight movie and he had never been so insulted in his entire life. Cloud is now level 42 after that battle. Okay, I think what we want to do here is go down and around in order to get the next set of treasure chests. So let's zoom down here. There should be a chamber entrance down here. And there it is, right there. So let's go on inside here to find some strange glowing panels. That looks awfully high tech for such a dusty tower here in the middle of the desert. Hellhounds also appear here in the Mirage Tower. We haven't seen those since way back in the Mount Gold Volcano. And looky here, we've got 10 treasure chests piled up, five on each side. So I guess we'll start off with the right side first. And this first treasure chest contains a dragon mail. And if we were to equip that on Cloud, it would not change his base stats there. But I do believe the dragon mail will offer protection against fire, ice, and lightning based attacks. So we'll go ahead and place that on Cloud there. Second treasure chest contains 10,000 gil. And there is another nice weapon in this third treasure chest. That is the Sun Blade. And we're going to put that on our Ninja Lock and replace his Ice Brand. You can see that's a sword effective against undead. Should work against those vampires that roam around here, I believe. So let's put that on him and take his attack power up to 44. Fourth treasure chest contains 7,600 gil. And treasure chest number five contains a cottage. Now on to the other side of the room. There's 13,000 gil. 12,350 gil. And there's another very nice new weapon. This is a Thor's hammer, which we are going to place on my white wizard Lena and that will replace her mithril hammer. You can see the Thor's hammer is a hammer that casts Thundara when used as an item in battle and that will take her attack up six points from 21 to 27 and her accuracy up 10 points to 83 and it also has a pretty cool animation when you attack with it in battle and I'll demonstrate that for you a little bit later on. There's 7900 gil in that fourth treasure chest on this side and lastly 8,135 gills, so plenty of change available in the treasure chest here, along with some nice new equipment. Okay, let's do some backtracking here, back up to the stairs. 
Whoops, I got a little too much of a running head start there. Nearly ran into the wall. Lynn and Vivi are now level 43 after that battle with some king mummies and a pyrolisk and a cockatrice. Might have been even a regular mummy thrown into the mix there. Still looking for one more monster. It's been pretty elusive on me so far. Maybe fairly rare. Oh, here it is. Speak of the devil. <laughs> this is the guardian, which uh, looks to be a robot monster. I guess it's uh, also a mechanical creature. I'm not sure about that, but um, looks like guardians have 200 hit points and they're weak to lightning, so I guess they are mechanical. So let's uh, see if we can show off Lena's new Thor's hammer in action there. And uh, let's see, I guess I'll have Vivi use the gauntlets. Save some MP. Yep, it looks like they used some sort of a laser beam. There you go. There's Lena's new Thor's hammer. Looks like the hammer I used to nail down some boards in my backyard earlier today, but uh, it looks like it has a bit of a lightning effect to it. And she successfully dispatches the last guardian, and we get 612 experience, 800 gil, and lock levels up to level 43. And we find yet another new entry for the bestiary. Let's scroll down to number 106 to find the entry for the guardian. And speaking to this wandering mechanical creature, he talks about his friend that left on a journey to the west. And he took the warp cube and went to see our master. I wonder if the light warriors are their master. Hmm, there's something for you to think about. But uh, there's a clue to the whereabouts of the warp cube if you didn't get it at this point in the game. Well, here's the set of stairs that will take us up to the third floor of the Mirage Tower. And we'll just have to kind of wander around down to the south here to the chamber entrance. And there it is there. Now, before we go inside the chamber, it may be a pretty good idea to check your HP level because once you do go inside, you're going to be greeted by a blue dragon. And the Blue Dragon has 454 HP. It's capable of casting the Thunderbolt spell. Fairly high attack power, not too terribly bad. And it is resistant to lightning and quakes, so don't try to use any thunder-based attacks against it. We'll have Cloud and Lock attack as usual. I guess we can have Lena try to use the Null Shock spell for effect. And I guess Blazara. For Vivi, but really I think Cloud and Lock are going to win this battle for us. And there's the Thunderbolt spell right there, doing some pretty decent damage. And Cloud is going to win the battle for us. We get 818 experience and 2 grand in gil. And we are going to find our last bestiary entry for the day. It is found at number 107 in the list. There's your blue dragon right there. And here's another one of those mechanical monstrosities. And when we talk to it, it tells us to use the warp cube to travel beyond the sky. It will take you to the flying fortress. All right, so we're gonna get to finally put our warp cube to use and travel way up in the sky to the Flying Fortress in our next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. You ain't seen nothing yet, folks. Lots more monsters to fight, lots more treasure to get, and we've got a fiend of wind to take out, and we'll try to do that in our next episode. So thank you very much for watching today's video covering the Mirage Tower. Hope you found it helpful and enjoyable. This has been Vortex, your host, wishing you a great day. See you again next time, folks.